Today we're going to look at five mistakes to avoid making in your home office. Whether you've already set up your home office and you're just looking for tips to kind of improve your space or whether you're about to set up your first home office, hopefully these tips will help you create a space that will increase your productivity. When the pandemic first hit, I think many of us fortunate enough to be able to work from home just kind of cobbled together makeshift offices thinking that this would all blow over. But here we are now almost a year later and pretty much nothing has changed. This truly might be the new normal as everyone likes to say. The thing is, is that this is actually not normal at all. So whatever your situation is with your home office, don't be too hard on yourself. Hopefully some of these tips, you know, will come in handy for you. The first mistake to avoid would definitely be not having a designated workspace. So the first thing to do is figure out where the best possible location for your desk is in your home. If you, for example, work from a laptop, you could try testing out working from different spots around the house before deciding. The whole like working from your laptop thing can be a double-edged sword because we end up working from the sofa or from bed instead of at a proper designated workspace. And believe me, I am 100% guilty of doing this. This sofa here has been my desk for a long time, more than I care to admit. Don't be afraid to think outside the box here as well. I love, for example, how Sarah Richardson decided to place her home office in the laundry room. Granted, we don't all have laundry rooms as big as hers or that are quite as spacious, but you know, you get the idea. So what you wanna do is just see if you can find ways to carve out some multifunctional spaces in your home that you can use. But what about having your office in the bedroom? I hear you ask. I know a lot of sleep experts say it's best to separate where you work from where you sleep. And of course that is, I guess, ideal, but let's be real, we don't all have the luxury of having that kind of space in our homes, right? So sometimes the desk in the bedroom is the only solution for those of us that live in smaller spaces. If you do have your office in the bedroom, there are some small things you can do to make it feel like you're not just working in your bedroom. You can face your desk away from the bed, preferably under a window if you can. Definitely clean up the room and make your bed and maybe use a rug to delineate your workspace. Probably the only instance where I would say it's best to look at an alternate solution to having your office in your bedroom is um, if having that combined space is affecting the quality of your sleep. I definitely recommend having a designated workspace, even if it's just a small corner, where you know that when you go there and you sit down, you're gonna get work done. Like you're not gonna be interrupted and you're gonna get the work done that you need to get done. Mistake number two is not understanding what distracts you. So now that you've placed your desk in the ideal location in your home, you may think you're done. Well, you're wrong. Now you have to figure out what your worst distraction culprits are. It's crucially important to make sure that when you're sitting down to work, your environment is free from all the things that distract you the most so that you can make the most of your work time. So if it's your phone, leave it in another room, or you know, if you need it close by, at the very least, make sure that you're switching off all those social notifications that keep popping up and grabbing your attention. If you're distracted by what's happening outside the window, draw the shades or perhaps face your desk away from the window. If it's your kids running around try shutting yourself in a room like the bedroom and tell them that you need you know x amount of time uh, to get work done and that nobody is allowed to enter unless there's an emergency if it's particular sounds in the house or coming from outside into the house you can try wearing noise cancelling headphones if mess distracts you then maybe don't work in one of the rooms in the house that tends to accumulate that clutter all the time. Back when quarantine started, Pontus and I were distracting each other constantly, so we definitely had to come up with a way to fix this. So what we did was, if someone was wearing their headphones, it meant that they were doing like focused work. Um, so headphones on meant basically don't talk to me right now. And this was a lot easier than having to like announce to the other person every time you didn't wanna be interrupted. So once you figure out what your main distraction triggers are, it becomes a lot easier to create a focused workspace no matter what room your desk or your office is in. Mistake number three is having uncomfortable furniture. It pains me to say this, but when it comes to office furniture, honestly, looks are probably the last thing that you should be looking at. I speak from personal experience when I say that you really should make sure you've got the best chair you can possibly get. And if this isn't available to you, you could try asking your workplace to borrow one of their office chairs. Many companies right now are allowing their employees to take home any equipment that they need in order to comfortably work from home. What I find really interesting actually is that the industry standard for desk heights is 29 to 30 inches, 
but that's actually only ergonomically suitable for people that are six feet tall and only a small percentage of the population is actually that tall. There are calculators online that will tell you what your optimal desk, chair, and armrest height should be based on your own measurements. So I would definitely take a couple minutes to check out what is best suited for your height. If you're in a position right now where you're buying new furniture for your office, you can look into desks that have adjustable heights or at the very least a chair that has an adjustable seat and armrests. Other things that help are things like lumbar support pillows and footstools for shorter people like myself, five foot two, who find themselves constantly using desks or chairs that are just too big. Mistake number four is having bad lighting. Spending hours on end with the wrong kind of lighting can actually be detrimental to your health, so it's a really important element to consider. A dim or improperly lit office can make you sleepy and it can give you eye fatigue. An overly bright office can also cause eye strain. So try to position your at-home workspace close to a window that gets plenty of natural light. If your office is in a windowless den or in a closet or in a basement with really small windows, bring in some additional lights to supplement. So everyone is different in terms of what kind of lighting they feel comfortable working with. For example, I prefer warm lighting um, and fluorescent lights can trigger migraines for some people. So experiment with different bulbs if you can. I've said this in other videos, but I love using smart light bulbs like Hue lights so that I can control the brightness and the exact color and color temperature of my lights at any given moment. But you don't have to use smart lights at all. You can just experiment with like simple, cool and warm bulbs and just see what works best for you. The more common problem is to have an office that's too dark, but if you're on the opposite side of the spectrum and your office is in a room that's actually far too bright and just gets way too much sunlight, it makes it difficult and frustrating to work for sure, especially if you're just having to squint at your monitor all day. For situations like this, you can draw your blinds obviously, or or use light filtering curtains, or you can apply like a sun blocking film to your windows. Mistake number five is chaos around you. I don't know about you, but there's nothing that distresses me more when I'm working from home than having a mess around me. And this is not actually surprising. Studies have been done that show that our brains actually like order. So constant visual reminders of disorganization and you know chaos drain our cognitive resources and reduce our ability to focus. Our physical environments significantly influence our emotions and behavior. Clutter in the home can make you feel overwhelmed and it can actually even make you more likely to procrastinate, which is something that I struggle with on a daily basis. So if you want to operate efficiently and with a clear head, keep your space as clean and tidy as you can. Even if you are one of those people that is seemingly unaffected by a tornado happening around you when you work, I urge you to try working for just one week in a tidy space and just see how it makes you feel. If you don't have time to clean your whole space right now, I get it. Things are a little crazy with like kids running around all day at home and stuff. Then maybe start small, like just try and make sure that your immediate area like your desk area is completely clean and clutter free it does make a difference here's a little extra tip for those of you doing a lot of video conferencing um, with a lot of us turning to video conferencing in order to get work done lately we've all kind of unintentionally virtually invited everyone in the office over into our homes and I think that that's actually really nice. Like it's nice to see our boss and you know, the higher ups of the companies in their own like natural habitats. It makes everyone feel a lot more human somehow. Video conferences are like little windows into everyone's lives. Be deliberate about what you want your background to say about you. So if you're working from home right now, I really hope some of these tips are helpful for you and that you're doing okay with everything that's going on. If you wanna see my next video, please subscribe. It's free and it really helps me out. Bye.